Where did we come from? The Bible says, in the beginning, God created. Evolution teaches the opposite. No one created. It all happened by itself. Which one is the truth? This is Headquarters. Doc M. Jackie and Rich. Their job? Investigate and discover the truth. This is The Creation Case. Wait a minute. What are these? Oh, those are some pictures that I need for my school assignment. Ah, look at your chubby cheeks. You're just the cutest. Don't you have any baby pictures? Please, I don't... <gasps> Can I see them? Please. Uh, I'm... Alright, but only because my mom sent me one just the other week. Okay. Here on my desk, I think she threw an old picture in. Here it is. That's. Oh my goodness, you're so cute! Oh look at you! Come on. Look at you, your little boy. Oh. Yeah, did you see the other letter that came? Uh, no, it, I haven't read it yet. It came with something. So cute. Hmm. What does it say? It's from a girl named Elena in Santa Cruz, California. It says, hi, Doc M. I love the beach, and what's really cool is hunting for fossils. I'm sending you a clam I found and a seashell. A seashell? I just got the clam. I didn't see any seashells. Oh well. Last time I took a friend fossil hunting. I told her these fossils were there since the flood. She thought I was crazy and I told her we have to look at the evidence around the fossils. She's getting it. <laughs> she was pretty confused about the whole thing. I didn't know what else to say. Can you help me make her understand? Thank you, Elena. She has nice handwriting even. She does, it's really cute. Mm. You know, there is stuff that's buried. People put super old dates on it, say it's old, and, but we have to be careful and study the evidence. It's like this picture of me. Is this old or new? It's old. Ah ha ha ha, careful. How do you know? Well, you're little, but you still look like you. Um, it doesn't have a date. But your clothes, 80s. Yeah, well, you're right. There's no date. So we have to look at the evidence, the cl clues. Is this Rich's new assignment? Exactly right. I'll go tell him. Where is Rich? Um, he said something about the forest and studying gravity. Gravity? Ah, well. Seems simple enough. Oops. What was that? I think I just found this seashell. Do you have a creation question for headquarters? Send your questions to Doc, Jackie, and Rich by visiting our website at thecreationcase.com.
Hey, I think we got a message from HQ. Must be our new assignment. I gotta get down from here. Hi Rich, this is Jack at HQ. I hope you weren't just hanging around waiting for your next assignment too long. Hanging, good choice of words. I have your new assignment from Doc M. Today we need you to investigate fossils. Hey Rich, if you can see me, uh, there's all sorts of old stuff buried in the ground. Those fossils must tell some story. Yeah, the fossil record, the things we need to find in the ground, seem to tell a different story to different people. Some scientists say fossils are evidence that our world is millions of years old. Other scientists say fossils aren't that old. We've got to get to the bottom of this. We do need to get to the bottom of this. Please investigate fossils. See if the fossil record provides any evidence for creation. Happy digging. Is he going to have to dig? Well, I guess we look forward to your report. Fossils. Interesting. I better let him know I got the message. Got message. We'll dig around for information. Get it? Dig around? <laughs> Another message. Very funny. I thought it was funny. All right, fossils. I better write that down in my journal. Fossils. It's hard to know what happened hundreds or thousands of years ago because no one's alive today that was alive back then. Fossils provide us clues and then we come up with the best conclusions we can. You know, not far from here is a place called Mesa Verde. Why don't we start our investigation there? It will help us understand how to figure out what happened in the past. We're off to Colorado. Help us investigate today. Download and print your own free journal study guide at thecreationcase.com. Well, we have arrived in Mesa Verde. It's an awesome location because we're over 8,000 feet above sea level. This is not your typical mountain though. This part of Colorado is made up of mesas and cuestas, high flat mountains. There are a lot of cliffs here, but the reason we came here is because about 800 years ago, the ancient Puebloan people built cliff dwellings right into the cliffs. That's what we came to see. They lived here for about a hundred years, and then, 700 years ago, they left. They abandoned this place. Then hundreds and hundreds of years go by, and they rediscover this place in the 1800s, and everybody wants to know, what happened here? It's a bit of a mystery because there are over 4,000 archaeological sites and over 600 of these cliff dwellings. Thousands of people lived in this area. There were a lot of questions, but very few answers, because the people that lived here did not leave a written record. Nothing. That's when you have no choice but to look at the pieces that were left behind and try to figure out what happened here. It's like a big puzzle. Puebloans built some interesting things. This is a kiva. Let's go down there. Um, I can't see a thing in this place.
It's important to remember as we investigate fossils that when we find fossils, they never come with a written record. Our only other choice is to start looking around for clues to try to understand that fossil. Here, archaeologists are starting to look for other ways to understand these fossils. Since fossils don't come with tags, our only option is to interpret them, make some assumptions about what we find. We've come to another of the cliff dwellings, a larger one. You know, we've learned that the Puebloans here used to make baskets, but then we also found out afterwards they learned how to make pottery. How do they know that? Because they found baskets and pottery down there and they were able to study it. They learned that the people here just tossed their trash over the cliff. So by studying that trash, they were able to learn about how they lived, how, about how they cooked, and how they ate, and how they hunted. So because of the order in which they found their trash, they've been able to make some assumptions, such as the idea that they first made baskets, and then later they learned how to make pottery. So why is this important? Because sometimes we find stuff that's been buried in the ground for a long time, but never has it ever been found with a tag telling us how long it's been there or how it got there. Since there's no proof, the only thing we can do is look at the clues and, well, based on what we see, we make our best guess at what we think happened. Sometimes museums and textbooks teach that fossils are millions of years old, as if they had a tag on them. How could they be so sure? The only thing we can do is study the stuff that we dig up and hope to learn more. As we look at the clues, we have to always keep in mind that no one really knows for sure what happened. They're just taking their best guess. So when a scientist or museum says something is millions of years old, remember, they really don't know for sure. Mesa Verde provides archaeologists with clues about the people that used to live here long ago. But does nature provide us any clues about creation? Evolution teaches that tiny animals like the extinct trilobite were some of the very first creatures. They teach that simple creatures evolved into fish and reptiles and mammals and birds and so on. The problem is even though we found thousands of different kinds of fossils, there's still not a single piece of undisputed evidence showing us that any of these creatures changed into the other. With so many fossils, we should be able to find countless examples of these transitional species changing from one kind of animal to another. That's the real problem with evolution, a lack of evidence. This is important. I'm gonna write this down in my journal. undisputed evidence of transitional fossils has never been found. About 150 years ago, Charles Darwin was one of the first persons to write about this idea of evolution. He wrote that the fossils we find today do not provide evidence for transitional species, but hoped that someday we would find those. Over 150 years later, and scientists are still searching. This really bothered some evolutionists. So not long ago, they started coming up with different explanations for why we don't find those transitional species. They called their idea punctuated equilibrium. I know, that's a tongue twister. They figure since we can't find those fossils showing those changes, some large event must have happened and caused everything to change all of a sudden. But not all scientists agree. There are many other problems too. For example, trilobites are found in the lowest layers of the geologic column. And they say they are examples of simple marine creatures. But the... Actually, you know what? There's a place not too far from here in Utah where we can actually go and dig trilobites. Why don't we go there now? Come on. Hi everyone, Doc M here, headquarters. Look what I have here. A fossilized fish. 
We find millions of these all over the world. How do they get preserved so nicely? I know the answer. Rapid burial. You know, a lot of scientists look for fossils to prove evolution. They look for transitional fossils, missing links, fossils that show one type of creature may have turned into another kind of creature. Something like in between two creatures. For example, something in between fish and amphibians. Ah, I've got a picture for you. Let's look. A fish would evolve through millions of steps over millions of years into an amphibian. If some type of fish evolved into some type of amphibian, we should be able to find at least a few fossils of the steps along the way as the fish evolved into the amphibian. Something again in between. Ah, here, let's look at it this way. So the fish would be our white blocks. And we have our amphibian. We expect and we do find both of these creatures separate. But we would also need for the evolution process to be confirmed to find one with three white and one red. And then we would find one that would be like two red ones and two white ones. A little more in that direction. And maybe we would find one that had three red ones and one white one. Eventually, of course, we would find one with all red ones. But in real life, all those in-between steps don't exist. All of them. We only find fish and we find amphibians. This is a simple example of only fish and amphibians. There are millions of other types of creatures out there. The missing links are, guess what? Missing. Some of the changes are huge too, but no fossil evidence that has ever, shows that that's ever happened. The Bible teaches us that God created all the creatures of the earth, each one unique and different. Yet again, this is why I believe God is my creator. Hey everyone, it's me, Rich Aguilera. I'd love to see you at one of our live events. To see where I'll be speaking, visit our website, thecreationcase.com Utah is a really amazing place with a bunch of cool landscapes. But right now, we're on our way to this place to dig up trilobites. You know, fossils are found everywhere, but Utah is filled with fossils. During the flood, the Bible tells us our planet was covered with water. As the waters receded after the flood, all this became a giant sea. Eventually, the sea drained and dried up and left behind some pretty amazing landscapes and a lot of fossils. There's a place up ahead you just have to see. One thing for sure, Utah has a lot of incredible landscapes. Isn't this an amazing place? We've got to stop and go down and check this out. What an unusual looking place. The rocks here have eroded in such a way that many of them look like giant mushrooms. These odd formations are called hoodoos. Yes, that's a strange name. No, I don't know who's in charge of making up names. Canyons are always a great place to see the layers of the earth. Hey, even here we get to see the layers of the earth. The interesting thing about this location is that the rock layers on the top are harder than the rock layers on the bottom. Oh, here's a great view. As you can see, this bottom layer has eroded much faster than this top layer. You can see it everywhere. Hard rock on the top, soft rock on the bottom. Just think, during the flood, all this was underwater. 
sure looks pretty neat now. Wow, this is such a cool place. I think I'm gonna sketch this, but uh, I think I need to get a little higher. I think I'm gonna climb one of these hoodoos and sketch in my journal. All right, we need to continue driving through Utah. We're not too far away from where we'll be able to dig for trilobites. Come on. Since the Bible teaches about a global flood, it makes sense to find marine fossils buried practically everywhere. Even in places like Michigan and Ohio, which are very far away from the ocean, we find fossils of marine animals like whales and sharks and walruses. Here in this part of Utah, one of the most common marine fossils we find are trilobites, these little tiny creatures that are now extinct. Well, we made it here to the trilobite dig site. I got my bucket and I got my hammer. We're gonna see if we can dig up some trilobites. Come on, let's go. The stone here is shale, so it's really easy to split open and look for trilobites. This looks like a good spot. You know, sadly, extinction is quite common. By looking at fossils, we can tell that many different types of creatures have lived and died in the past. They are now found buried in the ground or in rocks like this. This also fits the flood story because the Bible says that all the land animals were wiped out, except for the ones on the ark. Fortunately, God made each animal with built-in variety in its DNA. Still, sometimes creatures become extinct. We also see that in the fossil records, animals that don't exist anymore, all kinds, birds, insects, mammals, and reptiles. Even dinosaurs are just kinds of reptiles that are now extinct. Evolution has been teaching that over millions of years, one type of creature has been changing to another. If these changes really happened, we should clearly see it in the fossil record, but we don't. The fossil record does not show one thing changing into the other. Check it out, we found one. It's amazing. It's been buried here for over 4,000 years and you and I are the first ones to see it. You know what? I think I'm gonna try another part of the quarry. Trilobites are found in one of the lowest layers called the Cambrian layer. I think I'm gonna dig here. Evolution teaches that since they're found in the lowest layers, they were some of the first and simplest ones to evolve. The problem is, they're not simple at all. They're actually highly complex little creatures. They have compound eyes and hundreds of lenses, antennas, complex organs, gills, and several sets of limbs. Ooh, this is a good spot. I found a big one. Now we need to carefully chip away the rock around it. Evolution requires that life had to start with something simple, but this is not it. These are simply some of the first creatures that got buried alive at the time of the flood. You know what? I'm gonna write that in my journal. Trilobites were some of the first creatures buried during the flood. Let's keep looking for more trilobites. This is a lot of fun. You know, every once in a while, evolutionists come forward with a new fossil claiming that it's proof of evolution. They claim that the fossil is an in-between form of life 
a transitional species between one creature and another. Not long ago, scientists discovered a fossil of a fish called a coelacanth. Secular scientists used to think they became extinct about 60 million years ago and were never seen again in the higher layers. Since the coelacanth was never seen again in the fossil record, they assumed that it must have evolved into animals with four legs. Actually, I have a picture of a coelacanth fossil here on my phone. Well, guess what? They never became extinct after all. Living coelacanths are now photographed all the time. Here's one. Just because they didn't find a coelacanth in the fossils for 60 million evolution years, it doesn't mean they ever evolved. They never became extinct and they never evolved. They're still the same. I'm telling you this because we have to be careful with what evolution teaches. You know, there are some very intelligent scientists out there discovering many wonderful new things. But sometimes these scientists are so desperate to find proof of transitional species that they end up making mistakes, like the coelacanth. Remember, in the beginning, God created the animal kinds. It's that simple. That was fun. It's truly amazing uncovering things that have been buried since the flood. Things that no other human alive has ever seen before. It's incredible to think just how much stuff is buried all over our planet. We've discovered a lot of things, but in reality, it's a mystery just how much stuff is buried and fossilized right under our feet. Well, I need to finish up my report and send it to HQ. Remember, if you want to read it, just go to our website. The fossils we find don't prove creatures ever changed from one type of creature to another. Sometimes, creatures that supposedly evolved into other creatures and became extinct are still found alive, unchanged. There's more. Proof of these in-between transitional fossils have never been found. Trilobites were not simple creatures. They were highly complex, and they were created by God. You know, there are a lot of mysteries in this world. Many things we will never understand. God is one of them. There's no way we can grasp who He is. To be able to create by just speaking. To be someone that has no beginning and no end. To have so much love for us that He would send His precious Son to die so that we could be saved. Wow. Still, we should do everything we can to look for clues so that we can understand our Creator better and better. The more clues we find, the more we'll understand Him. Where do we find these clues? The two best places are in the Bible, His special book, and right here in nature. This is His own hand at work, creating. I hope you'll join me again for our next assignment. Remember, God the Creator loves what He creates, especially you. Good night. Wait, don't go yet. We've got bloopers. <laughs> Other types of coelacanth <laughs> 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 never appeared again. Never appeared again. That's a record. You know, it's. <laughs> Alright. What was my life? <laughs> Museums and fossils teach. <laughs> it provides archaeologists. <laughs> I hope you weren't waiting. Just. Fossil squirrels. <laughs> <laughs>